today I wanted to address a recent Dre's Two Cents video basically saying what's going on with the current state of the PC market. It's something I've actually been thinking about a lot and I agree with him on many points. So let's talk about why the PC market is so unhealthy right now. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. If you like the content, remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Some say it makes no difference if you get a new GPU or not by doing so, but it doesn't hurt. Maybe you'll get a little bit lucky. I did give away a 3080 last year. Probably could have held on to it. It seems to have gone up in value a lot more, but anyway, I'm happy that I did. So today, let's talk about what Jay's Two Cents said in his video. Basically, to sum it up, it's really, really unhealthy right now in the PC market. And so so you guys see the perspective of a large YouTuber like him, and you could see the perspective from a smaller YouTuber like myself, and it's actually very similar. Now, I know the amount of work that he has to put in to put out the content that he has. I respect everything that he's done, not to mention that we both are Case Labs fans. We both love water cooling, so I modeled a lot of stuff that I, when I was building PCs and things like that after his channel, so I certainly highly respect him and the builds that he's done, and I completely understand the viewpoint that he's in. Now, this is going to be the point of this video. It's not just us, the consumer, versus NVIDIA or AMD or Intel or whatever large corporation that there is. In between there exists a large amount of people of all types. It's going to be small YouTubers. You're going to have large YouTubers, of course, but it doesn't stop there. It's not just influencers. Think of everybody else in the middle, even the third party uh, partner card, you know, that are, are producing these for NVIDIA and AMD. We're talking about, you know, EVGA, MSI, Asus. And then after that, you have all of sort of the custom PC builders. You have all of the retailers. So there are so many people stuck in the middle of sort of the situation that we're in. It's really not just the consumer and the big companies. There really is a lot more happening here. So we have to discuss why the current PC market is so extremely unhealthy. What other item in your day-to-day -day life do you know that you kind of want to get one, but it's absolutely impossible to get and the prices are three or four times MSRP? It really doesn't happen much outside of collectibles, something like, uh, you know, Magic the gathering cards or something like that, you would expect this type of behavior. But for graphics cards and until recently, even processors and some other computer parts, this is pretty much unheard of. We've never seen such a massive amount of demand. Of course, we know there are various reasons why this is happening, but the end result is nobody has the GPUs that they want to get. When they do pop up, they are outrageously expensive. We talked at length about the really high prices that the 3080 Ti are commanding in terms of the third party uh, GPUs. And to be fair, the Founders Edition is $1199, which I know Nvidia wants to keep it at that price point. I know they probably might even lose money with it at that price point, given the really high prices that these GPUs are readily found. In fact, even today that the 3080 Ti came out, if I search around on the Facebook Marketplace or something like that, I already see people selling that very same Founders Edition for well over $2,000. So as you can see, for the few people that could get that, that's all well and good, but then we have the third party partner GPUs like EVGA and ASUS and MSI. Some of these are going up really over that amount by a considerable amount, even their MSRP. We're talking about 1700, 1800, 2000, maybe even more in some countries in some cases. So, all of this very sporadic and expensive pricing that's very different from the MSRP that we expect is not only going to affect the individual consumer and gamer. Let's take Jay's Two Cents as an example his recent video he asks what does his audience want to see because people you know they get salty when they see 3090s or 3080 ti's they think that youtubers you know have some special magic to get them sometimes they do get samples but that comes after a lot of hard work a lot of reviews a lot of time so nothing's really free the time that you have to put in for a lot of these you know review units especially somebody like jay's two cents who has a serious larger channel it's certainly very substantial so he asked what do viewers want to see. Most people don't want to see builds if they can't get a GPU. So that puts people like him and to some extent smaller YouTubers such as myself in a much tougher spot. 
Now, of course, any time of downturn in viewership or any type of, you know, sort of going away from PC hardware that there's in the market, it's always going to affect somebody like him a lot more than a smaller YouTuber such as myself, just because he has a bigger infrastructure in place. But that doesn't make it any less fair. It's still something that you have to consider when you look at the battle that's going on now between pricing, between availability. YouTubers aren't the only ones caught in the crosshair. Like I said, think of all the other companies sort of in the middle. Now, we're not going to talk much about the third-party GPU manufacturers because you can shift blame to them to Nvidia wherever you want of course they're likely setting the pricing some companies may be a little bit more consumer friendly than others for example I think EVGA for the most part has done a pretty great job in terms of keeping prices fair they even have some of their AIB models that go a little bit closer to MSRP and not six hundred or a thousand dollars more plus they have their Q system it's how I was able to get my 3090 and I've seen a lot of people especially my viewers have been able to get gpus from evga so i'll say that in terms of consumer friendly in terms of getting caught in the crossfire between you know the consumer and nvidia they've done a great job of course some of the other companies are definitely charging considerably more for the gpus of course this isn't also going to be just nvidia we can look at amd and the same things going on if i walk into a micro center you'll see that there are some amd models for like the 6900 xt that are basically priced out outside of the realm of reality some of them as high as $2,600 or $2,700 okay the 6900 XT certainly is a great performing card but that's really far from the $999 MSRP and thus it stays sitting on the shelf even during a GPU shortage so you can see that if you have to price things very high people just won't buy them so this is also going to be not good for a store like Micro Center or even Best Buy if they have to sell these AIB models they want to sell GPUs but if if they're sort of given very high prices to begin with that they have to go around and resell, even if it isn't necessarily their fault, it's going to make it very, very tough for them to be able to, you know, have these things selling. And then, of course, we have the system integrators. Look, recently, more and more people have been going after pre-built computers just because they offer at least a package that comes complete with a GPU within what they can expect to be a reasonable time frame compared to the maybe months and months and multiple months that they would have to wait for a singular GPU. Now, before that the CPU shortage for Ryzen chips was also in effect, this made even more sense. So as of today, for a lot of people that maybe they wanted to build their own computer, but they're okay with getting a custom or a pre-built computer, that certainly may be one of the better options just because at least they can order it and wait however long, eventually they'll get it. While the GPU race seems to be a lot more difficult to pin down when you can actually get it, you don't know which one you're gonna get. You're gonna be waiting on parts. So I certainly see why now even more people do the custom them or the pre-built route if you can't build your own because you don't have any parts at least you're going to get it from somewhere that you'll eventually get it and when i mean pre-built or custom computers i'm not just talking about computers that are sort of you know without character or something that somebody who builds their own computer wouldn't even want to touch i'm talking about stuff that's actually done really well by builders and by people that are pretty much like we are building computers except they're building for a company if they can't get adequate parts they can't run their business as smoothly as it should even though there's a lot of demand how are you going to sell computers and make money if you don't really have what you need to put in that system? And as we know, in the computer industry, margins are already thin and low enough as they are. So it's definitely something that on the surface, it's great to have, you know, millions of people wanting to be PC gamers. But if the parts aren't there, how are you going to put it together and sell? But in conclusion, this video is just to kind of remind you guys that just like Jay's Two Cents says, this is something that's really affecting him. So it's not just between the consumer and a big company like nvidia think of everybody else in between from me from jay's two cents smaller to larger youtuber to even all the manufacturers making different parts to all of the system integrators to all of the small shops that sell and build pcs you can see how many people are affected by a the lack of product and availability and two the really aggressive way that pricing has been changing lately i know there have been a lot of world events affecting pricing changes but some of these pricing changes certainly are a lot more aggressive than we typically would see in the past like you have a really really big variety of prices like from a you know a 3080 ti from 1199 msrp to some models costing at or over two thousand dollars it's definitely a big difference is there an 800 to a thousand dollar 
difference between a Founders Edition, you know, GPU from NVIDIA to something like an Asus Strix. There could be a little bit, but $800 or $1,000, definitely not. You could argue maybe $100 or $200 at most if you want a different cooler or RGB, but the price difference and the price gap are definitely very substantial and people really are just getting fed up and that's certainly just making the pc industry very very unhealthy and that means that more people will leave to console gaming or give up on the hobby altogether and in the future everybody's going to be negatively affected even the large companies not to mention the consumers and everybody else in between all right guys so let me know what you think remember to smash that like button subscribe if you like the content and i'll see you guys on the next video